We've got one week left until the December SAT, the second to last old SAT. So let's give it our best shot. Go ahead and try this reading question. In lines 43 to 54, the author discusses the massive census, line 47, primarily to what? So here is the massive census, and we want to know why the author discusses this. And there's a few things I want to point out first. Well, one thing I want to point out about the question, and then when we go into the choices, I'm going to analyze each of these choices very carefully to show you why the College Board is basically mean, how they set up questions to trick you, uh, particular traps that they're going to use in these choices to try to deflect you away from the right answer by attracting you to wrong answers. So let's start by looking at the question. The question, we already read it, but the key word I want to underline here is primarily. Sometimes you'll see this word as primary in a question, uh, but either way, what this is emphasizing is that whatever the answer is, it's got to be the thing that most of all that answers the question uh, in the uh, that basically answers the main function of the question. A, a, a word or a phrase or a paragraph or a passage can do multiple things. They can describe multiple pieces of information. They can give multiple arguments. But there's one thing overall that if you look at the whole passage or the whole paragraph in this case, there's one thing overall that the uh, excerpt is trying to do. It's the primary purpose or in this case what it's primarily doing. That's what you have to find. Don't get distracted by things that appear uh, in the passage but may not be the main primary purpose. And we'll see a, kind of a couple examples of that in this particular question. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the choices here. Well, first we'll, we'll read through the passage and then we'll go through the choices. And we want to know why the author is discussing this census. In 1838, to defeat a proposal to prohibit black citizens in Pennsylvania from voting, White abolitionist Benjamin Bacon and black American minister Charles Gardner went from house to house in Philadelphia's black community, gathering data for a massive census to document the contributions of black citizens. Fortune always spoke up loudly for equality before the law, but he withheld the details of his personal fortune, which must have been considerable for the from the census takers. However worthy the cause, and he was clearly in sympathy with Bacon and Gardner's aims, there were some things an astute businessman kept to himself. So why is the author talking about the census in this paragraph? Well, let's go through the choices. Uh, a, indicate the size of the black community in Philadelphia. This one is a particular trap because it's doing uh, what's called a recycled words trap. Basically, when you see a choice use exact words, specifically uh, specific words from the passage in the choice, it's actually a really bad sign because this is one of the most basic ways the College Board has to draw you to a choice that you might otherwise not pay attention to, but if you see words that you recognize, you might be more likely to pay some attention to it and therefore more likely to pick it, right? So black community in Philadelphia. Here we have Philadelphia's black community. So a little bit rearranged, but more or less the same words. I mean, you might also look at A and say, oh, like a census. A census is used to count population, and it is. But is that why the author is discussing the census? Is the author discussing the census to indicate the size of the black community? Is that really the important thing here? Not really. I mean, they are conducting a census to see kind of what black citizens do. And these people are going to be using that for some sort of aim, some sort of goal they have. Uh, but the size of the community doesn't really have anything to do specifically with what the author is doing here. How about B? Cite an effective strategy for influencing public policy. So you might look at the beginning and say, oh yeah, well they're doing this census to uh, defeat a proposal to prohibit black citizens in Pennsylvania from voting. So they're doing a census to kind of get a sense, of, a sense of what black citizens' contributions are and therefore try to bolster their support for voting. Um, and it seems on the surface, okay, but we've got two issues. Number one, is this the primary reason the author is bringing up the census to talk about this proposal? The author does mention it in passing. It is in lines 43 to 44, but the author then doesn't really take it up later. What comes up later is this discussion of this guy Fortin and how he interacts with the census. So first thing first, uh, this really isn't the primary purpose, kind of like we discussed earlier. It's got to be something that captures the whole goal of the paragraph, not just a small piece in passing. The second issue is when we break down the words very carefully, 
Is it an effective strategy? Do we see anywhere where the author specifically says that this is an effective strategy? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So here's a case where simply one word is enough to get rid of the entire choice. There are other reasons to get rid of the choice B, but I want to focus just in terms of the traps the College Board lays for you. Uh, you might agree with everything else, but you can't agree with effective. There's nothing here that says it's effective, so we can get rid of B. Note an important source of information for modern historians. I mean, this is one of those traps that's true, but irrelevant. So a census would be, in theory, a really useful source for historians, right? You can learn a lot about a population, the characteristics of that population, other things that might be useful for other studies. But is that the point that the author is trying to make here? No. So, the, so C is true, like a census is an important thing that's, that historians can use, but the passage doesn't talk about it, so you can't pick it. It's irrelevant to what's going on in the passage. How about uh, D? Demonstrate Fortin's commitment to racial equality. So again, kind of like in A, we have a recycled word being used, right? Because here they mention Fortin always spoke up loudly for equality before the law. Demonstrate Fortin's commitment to racial equality. Fine. Seems like it connects. But when you get really into the details, you'll see that D doesn't, again, capture the whole of what this paragraph or what the discussion of the census is trying to do. Sure, Fortin is all for equality before the law, but does that is that really why the author brought up the census, or is there some deeper meaning, a deeper level to it? And as we're going to see, yes, there is a deeper level to it. So we're going to get rid of D. Last choice, hopefully E works. Illustrate the way that Fortin balanced competing interests. At first glance, if you got this question wrong, perhaps E to you seemed weird, irrelevant, kind of strange. And that's not... Uh, coincidence, because that's exactly what the College Board is trying to do. Their goal, if they want to get, they want you to get questions wrong on some, on some level, right? They're trying to make their questions hard. How can they do it? They can do it by either A, making the right answer seem boring, innocuous, inconspicuous, so that you don't pay attention to it and don't think about it, or, and or, they make the trap choices look more attractive by using the strategies we've talked about, recycled words, uh, using a choice that looks pretty good except for one word, using a choice that's true but irrelevant. So those are the two things they're going to do. And an E, at first, E seems innocuous. It seems kind of pointless. But when we get into it, it seems actually like it works. Because notice how this passage ends up. Fortin always spoke up loudly for equality before the law, but he withheld the details of his personal fortune, which must have been considerable from the census takers. However worthy the cause, and he was clearly in sympathy with Bacon and Gardner's aims, there were some things an astute businessman kept to himself. So notice Fortin here has got two interests. Number one, he's got the interests of his belief in equality before the law, his belief in what Bacon and Gardner are doing. But on the other hand, as a businessman, he's got other things he's got to do to take care of himself, right? He's withholding the details of his fortune, as a businessman, he realized there's some things he's got to keep to himself. So he's trying to balance his personal and his public, shall we say, interests here. And that's why E fits. And that is the point of this discussion of the census. We don't really care, frankly, about Gardner and uh, Bacon. We don't really care about uh, their proposal in the context of this passage. What we care about is Fortin's response to it and how the census reveals something about Fortin. That's the primary purpose. I must say in passing that this comes from a larger passage. So you might have had an easy, if you got this one wrong, you might have had a slightly easier time of this one when you would have seen the passage was about this guy named Fortin. And then you might know that, okay, probably a choice having to do with Fortin makes sense. But I still think you can get this one even if you didn't know the whole passage. Uh, but I will say it makes it a little bit harder when we abstract this out of a, a larger passage with more questions. But in any event, this is how the College Board is mean. They are very, very tricky in how they design their choices. They're going to make the right choices seem boring and pointless. They're going to make the uh, wrong choices seem attractive and interesting and uh, draw your eye to them. So focus on all the choices and make sure you're always sticking to what's in the text, not what you think is in the text or what you assume is in the text, but what is in the passage itself. To learn more about Reason Prep's SAT, SAT subject test, and ACT video courses, go to reasonprep.com enroll, and you can find the link in the description.
below the video.